toxins are all around us, but which ones should be most cautious about and what are their sources? Can we reduce our load and exposure to prevent chronic illnesses or at least avoid as many of these toxins as possible? I do believe that one statement that refers to the WHO about 80% of all chronic issues being related to toxins and of those toxins, heavy metals being the most important to look at. Again, we're looking at heavy metals. So this article talks a lot about exposure to different types of metals, how they affect the central nervous system. Well, number nine, uh, it affects the thyroid, of course. Many different glands. Uh, mercury salts have been associated with effects on the central nervous system. Also, brain, central nervous system. Keep getting the same theme. Um, high concentrations have shown a wide variety of cognitive, sensory, personality, and motor functions. So, look at number 12 was the thyroid accumulates. Actually, most mercury does accumulate over the time, and it's very important to get it out. The toxicity of methyl. Also, we're talking about gases, uh, mercury from fillings. They're always gassing off and always causing you problems and neurological problems. The scientific evidence indicates that exposure to metal mercury is more dangerous for younger children than adults. Again, because of the lower thresholds for neurological effects from metal mercury and higher levels of distribution of metal mercury to developing brains of young children, which can result in interference with development of motor cognitive skills. Remember, if you don't want that to happen, guess what you should be avoiding? Fatigue, generalized inability to distinguish tastes and smells, headaches, cerebral palsy, hyperflexia, gross motor and mental impairment, blindness, deafness, kiss to the ears and the eyes, there are receptors on the skin, yep. Okay, so some other things to look at here. Chronic mercury poisoning from a single brief exposure. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. A single brief exposure. Chronic poisoning. So we have to really consider what we're doing to our young at such an age where their body is developing. And one thing we have to remember, of course, is that electricity goes to metal because metal is conductive so wherever you've got metal you'll find a lightning bolt will go towards the metal vice versa of course also when you've got metal and in the body when you're thinking of the electrical system the uh, nervous system the brain metals are going to go to the nervous system and to the electrical system and that's where you get pain and different types of cancers, gliomas, DIPGs, and stuff like that. This is why so many children have this type of brain cancer. And the good thing is, it can be fixed, but not with chemo. That would be insane. Another quite good paper here was talking about environment and disease risks. And of course, we know the link between that already. Here, just to outline again, the same theory. Although the risks of developing chronic disease are attributed to both genetic and environmental factors, 70, 90% of disease risks are probably due to differences in environments. Think epigenetics, epidemiologists. Okay, uh, epidemiologists increasingly use genome-wide association studies to investigate diseases while relying on questionnaires to characterize environmental exposures. Good one. That's going to work really well. A more comprehensive and quantitative view of environmental exposure is needed if epidemiologists are to discover the major causes of chronic disease. We know what they are. What they mean by discover is to factually demonstrate and publicly uh, present. And you can't do that until they start doing studies properly. And that's what they're saying here. Again, another journal on the effects of heavy metals on human health. This is a huge problem. So let's quickly take a look at the skin. The skin is basically the border between the inside of the body and the outside. The skin of the cell is also called the membrane. 
and it relates deeply to the brain in this regard because it's really the place where all the information is gathered from the surroundings and is used as an input then to understand what's happening. Now if you break that membrane you're basically bypassing the intelligence of the body to understand what's happening. So this is the, also the first layer of the immune system. If you bypass the first layer of the immune system, which is the most important layer of the immune system, the skin, then you're going straight into the unthinking, automatically responding part of the immune system, which will then unleash a crap storm on whatever is just put into your body. That is actually called the cytokine storm, which is in fact the same way that the con virus actually kills people by a cytokine storm. So this is probably something that we really should try to avoid, especially if we have the con virus. Okay, so what do we do if we want to deal with these heavy metals and other synthetic toxins which are in the body, they're attached to the nervous system, magnetically binded. How do we get these kind of things out of the body first? So I can only think of two things. Yeah, make that one thing. I can only think of one thing, or at least one thing I'm going to mention here today, that can do that, especially beyond the BBB, the blood-brain barrier, because up here it's impossible to get to with any kind of nutraceuticals or anything like that, because up here it's protected by this blood-brain barrier because it's a very important organ. Um, however, some of these things in those uh, syringes can get into this part of the body. And in fact, that's what they're designed to do. So this thing is amazing. It's like a little cage. It basically comes from a kind of a clay and clays are very well known for absorbing. Uh, taking out metal from the body is not so easy. A lot of people, they would use chelation techniques, which uh, are quite abrasive. They're very hard on the system. They can be quite dangerous. You can end up with Herxema reactions. You can end up with uh, redepositing the metals around the body, which you don't want. But uh, this little magnetic cage here uh, will bind onto the metal. It will go inside that little cage and it will be shuffled out the body. So there's almost no Herxema reaction at all which is basically when you get a toxic uh, release from the body, kind of similar to a virus when you're getting a toxic release from the body. Uh, you get kind of viral symptoms, temperature and things like that. So this one is very good for taking out metals and things. Uh, very good for children as well because it's just a clear liquid. You only have one spray a day, working up to a maximum of five sprays a day. So it's incredibly powerful. I wouldn't recommend overdosing, but you can if you want. There should be no problem with that. Um, if you have a slightly higher budget and you want to do something a little bit more uh, details, you want to increase your levels of health, you want to combat viruses, you want to make sure you don't get a virus, you want to make sure you don't get sick uh, in any way whatsoever, then it's all the same. You just have to increase your levels of health. That's all you have to do. And I'm working now with a company which I think is fantastic called CellCore Biosciences. And um, they, just like my presentation, is put into little segments in order, in the correct order, so that everything makes sense in this video. You start with the introduction, then you get into the details, and you end up with a summary, which is where we are now. Um, this also relates to health and nobody does this with health they're just using single supplements single supplements like vitamin c like vitamin d uh, people are kind of shooting in the dark okay i'm gonna try vitamin e i'm gonna try a chelation i'm gonna try mega dosing vitamin c i'm gonna try detoxing but if you don't know the steps of the body that you need to go through, the biological steps and phases of biology that you need to go through first before you detox, then you might end up in trouble or you may not even get anywhere. If you're shooting in the dark, your body's not going to understand what you're doing. This will be a system that your body will understand what's happening. At least it will be told what to do when you're going through the phases, it will understand, okay, now I can do this. Oh, now I can release this. Oh, now I can bump my immune system up. So the first phase is energy and drainage. 
The second phase is gut and immune support. The third phase is the whole body immune support to really give you that energy for the next phase, which is the systematic detox. And then after that, again, you've got another immune support to raise up your energies again and get more deep into the immune system. Uh, the five phases are fantastic and they work very well. They're a little bit expensive, a little bit more expensive than uh, other things which may or may not work, but at least with this system, you know you're talking to the body and you know the body is going to respond and you know that you're going to do things in the right order so that you'll clean out the maximum amount that you can possibly do. You give your body a huge boost by the end when you get to the detox cycle that's going to be amazing. You could, if you wanted to, just do one or two phases, and that would probably clean up most people's problems. But if you're having a serious problem, you might want to go for five phases. If your problem is just kind of annoying, but you can deal with it, maybe one or two phases will be enough. Maybe even just the nano zeolite that we talked about will be enough. This is a very important um, phase, phase two, because it has the parasite cleansing. Almost everybody has parasites, especially if you have heavy metals. So if you work on these two at the same time, uh, they'd be really, really good. Autistic children always have parasites because they have heavy metals. They go hand in hand, walk down the street together. It's a recipe for disaster. You kill the immune system, kill the stomach, and kill the brain. You're left with a vegetable, basically. And these kind of things can help repair the, the toxic damage. And yes, aut autism can be reversed. If you know what you're doing, if you can get past the blood-brain barrier, which you can with the Nano Zia Light. Have a look through this. I hope you enjoy the presentation today. I hope you learned something. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up and press that little bell thing so that I can annoy you in future with further videos. Thanks very much.